Today's going to be a nice quick session with no real thinking involved. Today I thought I'd take a few moments out and show you how to modify your machine to make it do exactly what you want with regard to Z equals zero. I'm lucky enough on this machine to have a controllable Z axis, stepper controlled. And that's because originally this machine had an autofocus on it. Now, those of you that go back far enough will remember that I'm not enamored with the autofocus system on this or any other machine. The pen system that was on here was quickly removed. A, I found it to be fragile and it was very easily gummed up and got sticky. And the autofocus system could only be accessed through the menu on the keypad. So you had to hunt through the menu to find the autofocus function and then press it. And then it would carry out the autofocus function. And it may or may not complete the function com correctly. It really depends on how your table was set and what work you had on your table. Whenever you changed a lens, you had to set the autofocus system up completely. I got used to it and I was able to do it in two or three minutes, but anybody that's not used to it, is frightened of it, would do it in maybe 10 or 15 minutes. It was a really tedious process. And of course, the final thing is, there is no such thing as a focus. There are lots of focuses depending on the speed that you're running at. I really couldn't see the point of an autofocus system on this machine. So it was ripped off. But I love the fact that I can control the Z on this machine. Because there are times with some of the programs that I've invented since where I use the Z very conveniently for controlling the position of the table. The problem is the position that I want to control the table from is not always at the same Z zero position. But one of the things I've been promising to do is to make myself a very quick fix that allows me to select exactly where I want Z zero to be on the table position. Right, let's start off at the beginning and show you all the different ways that Z zero can be set. Now, if we go to the user settings, you'll see that by default, in the auxiliary settings, home position or home parameters, it says auto home X, yes, auto home Y, yes, auto home Z, no. Well, that's because I just switched this on and I've not actually read the machine parameters. So I'm gonna read my machine parameters now. And you'll see that my machine parameters say yes, yes, yes. So I've selected auto home Z equals yes and written it back into the machine. That is one way that you can make your machine automatically home to Z. To lower the table, so I've manually forced the table down now. But if I want to reset at any point in time without turning the machine off, I can just press the reset button And that again will reset all three axes of the machine, including Z. There we are, we're back to Z, zero. You wouldn't normally have the auto home zero if you've got an autofocus system, because you want the autofocus system to do your zero setting for you. Now, hiding away in the machine here somewhere, I remember throwing uh, uh, the autofocus pen. Now I've not disconnected the autofocus system. I've just removed the pen. I'm not going to press autofocus. I'm going to press reset again. And you'll notice I've pressed the button and I've stopped Z. Set that table to that position via the autofocus pen because something in that pen has caused this table to stop and reset zero at this position, which is fantastic. I could technically have a switch here and just press it and it sets my table where I want it. So let's just drop the table down. And over in this corner of the machine here, you'll see that there is a micro switch. 
Now, that micro switch is actually the thing that gives us zero on the table. The bearing comes up, hits this, and tells the table, I now want to set zero. Let me just do that manually. I'm going to press the reset button, and everything is going to start happening. The table is going to come up, and it's going to stop, and I've pressed the button twice. But I've stopped that table at that position there because I've performed a zeroing operation on this switch just under here. Now that operation is a very simple procedure that the machine follows. It comes up and makes this switch. It then drops down and disconnects the switch. Once it's disconnected the switch, it then creeps up again very, very slowly until it makes the switch again. And then it drops down very, very, very slowly until it just disconnects from the switch. And as soon as it disconnects from the switch, that is when it sets table zero, Z equals zero. So there's only that one function here, that one operation that always sets zero. This autofocus pen that you saw me messing with is really only interfering with this switch circuit. When I switch that on and off, I was doing the same as switching this on and off. There's nothing magical about this autofocus system. Up to now, if I want to set this to a different position, I normally do a bit of a bodge. There's the bearing block there, and the switch is up the top there. I can make that switch by doing something silly like this. I can just sit a block of material on there, which is one inch thick, and that will now stop the table one inch down and set the zero one inch lower than it was previously. That's a fairly quick way, lazy way, of changing the table zero position. Now, there is another official way that you can change the table zero, and that's to go into vendor settings. RD8888. When we look at the Z axis, you'll find that we've got breadth 650 millimeters. It really doesn't matter what wet, what breadth you set because that's basically the depth of the table but on this machine it doesn't really matter because on the bottom of the stroke there is a limit switch which even if I tell that to go to two miles it will only go down as far as the limit switch and then it will stop so it really doesn't matter what set what width you set the breadth to then you've got this thing here called home offset now what you've seen my table do is to come up to zero drop down come up very slowly, drop down, and at that point there, it sets zero on the keypad. Now, if I change this to something else, like maybe 25, and let's just do it. 25, and I'll now write that back. Let's go and look to see what effect I've had on my zero table position. It's coming up, and it's gonna hit this switch down here, and set first attempt at zero. It says, okay, we're nearly there, but this is not accurate enough. So we need to drop down, then we'll come up, then we'll drop down and we'll find where real zero is. There it is, but hang on. And down, and down. Okay, so now what it's done, it's set machine zero 25 millimeters lower than the switch that sets zero. So I've actually created a table setting zero, which is what I want, which is much lower. But my goodness me, what a faff, just to get a new table Z position. That's why I don't do it the vendor setting way. And I use that rather cheap, dirty, and very quick method of resetting a table zero one inch lower than what I need. I mean, it could be four inches, like that. It doesn't make any difference. There are two other ways that you can set zero via the keyboard. Let's turn the light off so we can see the keyboard nice and easily. Right down the bottom here, we've got autofocus. So when I want to perform an autofocus, first of all, I've got to come in here and press the ZU button. Then I've got to decide whether it's quicker to come all the way down to the bottom here, or whether it's easier to go up from the bottom to autofocus. 
Either way round, autofocus is right in the middle of a list. Okay, so I haven't got the autofocus pen on the machine at the moment, but is that going to make any difference? The answer is no, because look what's going to happen. When I press autofocus, enter. First of all, it's going to set zero against that switch in the corner there. It's not going to take any notice of the autofocus pen, because the autofocus pen isn't there. And then what it's going to do, look, it's going to set the table 25 millimeters lower, because that's what I asked it to do. Okay, look, I'm going to take that offset away, because it's nothing but a pain. So there is one other way that you can access a Z reset. And that's to come into the ZU button again, and you've got this menu, and if you look at the last item in the menu, it says Axis Reset. Let's go up one, and we get to Axis Reset, Enter. So if we select Z, and press Enter, and we've reset Z at table position. Goodness me, I thought this was going to be a quick session. Now, very conveniently, that switch has got pull-off connectors on it. And it's the middle one and the top one. It doesn't matter which is which because it's just a circuit. It's as simple as that really. All we've got to do is to put another switch in there. And I have a very convenient little push button switch. Right, so that job's done. We've just connected two wires onto that switch now. We've got another switch out here. And hopefully that switch out here is doing performing the same function as that one. So let's see what happens when we turn this machine on. Can we interrupt? Yes, we can. And there we go. It's as simple as that now. We can stop that zero. And that is now Z0 there. If I don't like it, I can press reset. Have it a little bit higher. Stop. Watch it go down. Just press again. And there we go. It's as simple as that now. And hey, perhaps you're just as annoyed with your Z0 as I was. And you can now attempt the same very simple fix.